Welcome back, everybody. After that marathon of a break video, I thought maybe I'd do a couple of short videos just to give you a little breather if you're still here. And if you're here, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, what I'm going to do is, and you'll notice I've assembled the, the front clip here. I, uh, I have three different things that I want to address with this. So one, um, the, the brace bars that go on uh, the core support on either side over to the fenders. I also want to um, plug weld or stop up some of these holes in the, um, in the core support. Um, Half Rod, I don't know if you've ever been to his channel. It's uh, H-A-F-R-O-D, Half Rod. He was on G-Body Forum and uh, he did a 1978 Cutlass Salon. It was a two-tone red and gold with uh, 442 stripes. The car was beautiful, beautiful. So um, he did a lot of like little custom touches to it, and one of them was on the core support. He he uh, spot welded and uh, and plugged up a lot of the holes, because these these cars, G body. This is what we're talking about. Um, you've heard me say it plenty of times. So the car that I'm working on, a 1987 Olds 442, that is a G body. It's in the same family with the the Regal and the Grand National, Monte Carlo SS. Um, the Pontiac Grand Prix, all those vehicles, same frame. So General Motors named their vehicles, like if this is a G body, because the frame was labeled uh, with the designation G. Just like old Cutlasses and Chevelles were A bodies. That's, there was an A frame is what they, they labeled it. So these are G frames, so it's a G body car. On, um, on G body cars, they had multiple applications, B6s, V8s, um, and diesel, oh, oh, you ever had a 350 Olds diesel? I apologize on behalf of General Motors. That was a bad, bad idea. Now, you take uh, a 350 Olds diesel and you strip all that junk off of it and you bore the block out, you can have a 442 cubic inch small block Olds. <clears throat> that's, <laughs> that's a different story. Those vehicles all had different applications, different things that bolted onto it. So the core supports are made with all these holes in it because it might have had different things that were bolted to it. Uh, anything that is not needed on this, I'm going to fill in and smooth out. Half Rod did it to his and it just, it made it look so much better. And um, if, you've, uh, if you've been on um, G-Body Forum, there's this guy, Injected Cuddy. He's also got an Instagram. You know, check that out. His car is beautiful. Um, I'm jealous. But he, uh, he found a guy that did like a filler panel in the front. I think they're like, uh, like plastic pieces that he, uh, it's like four parts. So these holes in the front, I'm going to leave here because I'm doing what he did. Uh, I, I like the way that looks so much. He just posted some pictures recently and I'm like, I'm stealing that. that that's, I'm doing that. So um, doing that part. And then I'm going to cheat off a of half rod, half rod's idea, and I'm going to um, fill in the holes on the core support. Third thing, this is going to be interesting because I've never done this before. Uh, the plastic inner fender wells. Um, these vehicles had a bunch of stuff again across four different models. Um, different stuff would be bolted onto the fenders. Like on this one, there one of these stands over here is for um, a map sensor don't have that anymore. So uh, I've seen a couple of videos and I'm going to give it a try myself and I think I just need one donor fender. So I've got to find uh, a G-body in a scrapyard somewhere which on the east coast is like finding a unicorn in a forest. It's getting harder and harder to find old cars here. Um, I, I may have to take a trip to, uh, to find a yard that's got some old stuff that they haven't just crushed and sold. But if I get one uh, inner fender well, I think I can use that to cut and splice pieces of the plastic. I've seen them do it. Uh, use like a soldering iron and you just basically use some extra material and you melt the corners and you, you basically, it's almost like plastic welding. Uh, give it a try just to smooth the fenders out a bit so it looks nice. And I have, I really, leave a comment. I, I would love to hear your input on this because I am torn. Um, on, the, on the Olds 442, uh, back in the 70s, the inner fender wells, they would be uh, red. 
It was like a red, it was a red molded plastic inner fender well. And uh, I've been, been toying with the idea of tying that into this car and having red inner fender wells. But I just don't know. I might have to, uh, I might have to play with Photoshop and see if I can actually uh, mimic that color and, and repaint them to see what it looks like. Because I just don't know. Is that going to be cool or is it going to look weird? Uh, anyway, <laughs> these are first world problems, right? So anyway, those are the three things I want to do. So this video, I am concentrating on the braces that are on the, the sides that go from the core support over to the, the fender. And uh, this is what my car came with. Why? Why, General Motor? That's, that's like a coat hanger somebody straightened out. What? That's terrible, right? The great thing is, if you study these cars enough, you'll realize that General Motors, in, um, in an effort to save money, made a lot of these cars very cross-compatible. So if something bolted on the one, the threads are probably there ready to go for another. Uh, on, on some Grand Prix and Monte Carlos, in the, in the front, there's um, the very front of the frame, there's two braces that go from the center of the frame, like right below where the block is, and they go up to the corners of the frame, like right, uh, right behind where the bumper bolt's on. And that would like help to triangulate the front of the frame so it wouldn't be wobbly. Well, some cars had a support that went from underneath the, the core support on both sides, tied into those two, and went all the way across. If you look online, you can actually find that it's uh, people are making like a welded one-piece triangular thing you can bolt on the underside of your car in the front. Well, if you study these cars and you know what to look for, I found all that stuff. And oddly enough, I found it in a junkyard years ago on a 1986 Pontiac Grand Prix V6. Uh, I'm talking like Cush car, grandpa's vehicle, big pillowy interior, like you could sleep in that thing for days. And it had all these suspension pieces that my 442 did not. Why? I don't know. I don't know. General Motors, what? I don't, I don't know. So that car, and I don't know if it was because they considered it a very luxury type vehicle and they wanted a super smooth ride, so they put extra bracing on. I don't know. I had the F41 suspension on this car. It should have come with that stuff. It had the sway bar in the back. It should have had the bars on the front, right? Anyway, I digress. I'm running on here. Same Grand Prix have these. These are the braces that go from the core support out to the fender. Look at these meaty things. These are nice. This is what I'm going to put on this, except these are a little too long. Let me grab the one that will go on this side. That's this one. Yeah. So you can see a little, little bit longer on the side there, right? So I've got to shorten that out to make it fit for the bolt. And I've got, to, I've got to cut the end and I've got to flatten it. And I want to try to mimic the way this stamping looks. So if you look at it, it doesn't look like I just cut it and then took a hammer to it and smashed it flat and drilled a hole in it. Uh, I'll try to make it look halfway decent. We'll see how that goes. Um, it's going on the car, I can tell you that much. So let me, uh, let me move the camera and get up here. I gotta bolt some stuff on so I can figure out my clearance. Okay, first things first. Get this rod out of the way. So we're gonna need to bolt on. Look how old and cruddy this is. I got brand new ones uh, from G Body Parts. If you haven't been there, Mike's Bonnie's, both good places, uh, good suppliers for stuff like this. Um, Got brand new uh, overflow and uh, washer tank. Um, they're just wrapped in plastic, waiting their turn to get put on the car. So I gotta bolt these on. If you'll notice, there's a ridge right here in this. The bar, or the coat hanger that used to be there, ran right along here. And this, that crease is there basically to, to give a room for that thing to go to bolt to the fender. So this has to be in place for mock-up so I know where that bar is going to land and how difficult it's going to be. Is it going to clear this? Is it going to press on it? 
So anyway, um, so this has got to go into place. Oh, while I'm running my mouth, if you've ever, if you've ever tried to clean one of these, like if you, sometimes guys wait too long to, to flush their systems and, and if there's a lot of crud or something inside here, you can take a hose and put it in there and wash it all out, but you may have like a, like a line or like dirt or debris on the inside. You can clean the outside as much as you want, but the inside sometimes is cruddy and for whatever reason it just won't let go. Here's something that we would do at the dealership uh, to clean these things up. Take it off the vehicle and, and plug, the, uh, plug your overflow line so it doesn't leak out. We would fill this thing about maybe halfway, quarter, halfway, with uh, some type of water-based detergent. You could use Purple Power, uh, the Simple Green, something like that. And we would use uh, a cup of, um, we call it Stay Dry. You use kitty litter, honestly, as long as it's not clumping. Don't, don't put that in there, you'll, you'll, you'll regret it. But like standard kitty litter, or if you've actually got some Stay Dry, with that's the stuff you throw on the ground to like soak up oil if you make a mess. We would take a, like a, like a red party cup, pour that in there, close the lid, and shake it up, and the, um, the, the Stay Dry acted like um, a pumice on the inside. And it basically helped the soap scour all the walls of the inside of the jar. And then you wash it out, hose it out, that thing will be minty, fresh, clean, brand new. So if you have that issue, that's something you could do if the outside looks decent. This is junk. Anyway, so let me put this in place. This yeah, bolts down right there. So if I haven't said this before, if you've uh, got a G-Body, there are, I don't know, it was during that time period where we were still under this <laughs> misconception that we were going to just completely transfer to the metric system, right? And it, <laughs> did it ever happen? I don't know. Um, so these cars had a mix of standard nuts and bolts mixed in with metric. So you'd have like standard nuts and bolts on the engine sometimes, and then you would get to like trim parts and things like this, and it would be metric. Stuff under the hood, you could, you could run into something that's quarter inch right next to something that's seven millimeter. It, it, <laughs> it made no sense. They should have just picked one and went with it. I don't know. But if you have one of these cars, if you have a wrench set and a socket set, let's say from quarter inch up to three quarter, and then for metric, if you have a seven, 10, 13, 15, maybe an 18 every once in a while, I, I can't think of anything on the car that was 18 millimeter. But if you have those sockets and wrenches, you can take every nut and bolt off this thing. That's pretty much all you're gonna need. Anyway, I'm running my mouth. 10 millimeter. Just gonna snug this down. Make sure I'm just gonna use one bolt per side. So that's about where that's about where that's supposed to be. I'll do the same thing over here. How's that go on? Goes like that. Same thing, 10 millimeter on this side. Just run these down. Put it in the general spot it's supposed to be. Alright, let's get one of my bars up here. Let me come around the side. So, it's easy to tell which bar, I'm getting the light, which bar goes where, all right? If you pay close attention, you can actually see the circle of the washer that sat on that. So you know this is the top side, because this is where the bolt with the washer sat. So as long as this is top side, you got the right curve, you got the right side. Kind of just run this down where I can move it. And thankfully, it's oversized. So look how much you got some wiggle room. So I'm gonna put that right right in the center. And we'll see, that's not I don't think we're gonna have any interference. Put this pull this bolt. Much better. So that, yeah, that's gonna work out nice. Okay, 
Let's check the other side. This is the side I'm worried about because this bar can't clear that washer tank, and I bet it does because I bet this is this is the same washer tank they used on all the G bodies. So why wouldn't it, right? So the angle the angle is a little different. And I don't think as it goes up there. Oh yeah. That is going to be that's going to be perfect. I could almost get away with just popping a hole here enough to put that clip in. Eh. Now we'll see. It's decisions, right? You know, my dad said, always uh, work smarter, not harder. So I think I'm going to spare myself from having to cut the pipe, flatten it, make it look like it's factory, round the edges, sand, all that stuff. I think, I think I'm gonna bolt them just farther back. And that's gonna be it. I'm just gonna drill the holes and um, my 10 millimeter. So on the, on the fenders, there is a metal inner fender part that actually unbolts and you can take loose from the, the outer fender. So when I get to bodywork stage, I'm just going to drill the hole where it's supposed to go. When I get to bodywork stage, I'm going to find a nut to fit the, the stock bolt that came out on the back side, and I'm going to attack a nut onto it so I can drive my bolt down. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. And when I take this clip out, when I take this clip out, it's uh, with the bar up here in place, Covers that up, can't even see it. So unless you're really looking for it, you wouldn't even notice. So let's let's find where is that center at? Alright. Move the bars out of the way, just drill holes. So it started small and I end up final size is three eighths. That's going to be enough room to fit the bolt in, and I can tack a nut on the back side. There it is. Let's put that up. So with the nut tacked on the back side. Alright. So now I've just got one side to go. This is going to be easy. I was uh, planning on doing a lot of work. Don't need to do it. Alright, so the two bolts for this are actually on the other side, underneath the fender, going up in. Okay, so I just took the one out front, I should be able to rotate that around enough to be able to get in here square. There we go. Alright, that is done. <laughs> Alright, well, This is not what I expected. I expected to be cutting these bars and showing you how I was going to have to hammer them into place and make them look factory and it was going to be really cool when I was going to show all my skills and um, it was just easier drilling two holes. <laughs> so work smarter, not harder, right? Okay, well you know what? Um, surprise! Short video. So anyway, so that's it for now. I am going to have to take this back apart and put it back in storage because the little woman wants her spot back. I don't blame her. So that is it for now for this one. And then uh, next time um, I'm going to have to strip down this front core support and then we'll plug weld some holes and uh, try to make that look pretty. Anyway, that is it for now. If you made it this far, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, I hope that I have entertained you enough and showed you enough uh, interesting facts and um, tricks and tidbits to uh, earn your subscription.
So if you would, oh, right down there, if you would please uh, make today the day that you subscribe. It really helps. Hit the bell notification so in a week or so when I make another one of these, whatever it is, uh, you'll know about it. And um, the t-shirt shop, if you see something you like, buying a shirt just puts money right back into the project and it helps me a lot. Well, I appreciate you watching. Till next time, have a good one.